Hi everyone, be here. Today I bring a tutorial where I show how to implement this pulling chain mechanic in VR. For this tutorial I'm using the project base that I created for the pickups in VR from my previous video. So make sure to check that video before we start with this one. Okay, let's go. Okay, in this scene, I have this example of the rope. So I'm gonna open it and show you how it looks. This rope extends from the pickup class from the previous project. If you remember, we have the root, the base, and interactive collider. Okay, the rope is composed of two elements the pickup which is this handle all of these extends from the pickup base class then we have this cable component which is perfect when you want to add any kind of probe mechanic in your games and finally we have a constraint which keeps everything in place let's take a look at the rope class The rope extends from the pickup and as you saw on, on the pickup on the rope blueprint we have the root, the base and the interactive collider. All of that explained in my previous video. So the rope basically has this constraint component and the cable component. If you want to use this component you need to add that dependency to the dependencies file, scissor file. And it's basically to add this cable component over here and also over here. If you do this, you need to close Visual Studio and open everything again. Okay, I have some variables and some methods to help with the pool mechanic. If we go to the CPP, we can see that we have the cable component defined and is attached to the root. This root comes from the pickup base class. And the same for the component constraint. Both of them are sub-default objects and nothing else. Now, the logic. Everything happens on the tick. And I have this check to make sure that I'm not checking anything if I'm not using this pickup. If you remember from the pickup project, this boolean indicates that we are using the pickup or not, or which is the same, we are picking up the actor or not. Okay, next thing is to check the length of the cable. I have this initial cable length which I take in the begin play. Okay, so the, this method, this function is simple. I only take the distance from the constraint component to the base component. So we can go back to the blueprint and see how that looks. So we have over here the constraint component and the base. So the length I'm taking is this one. And that's what it is. Okay. So we take the current length of the cable. I also have this extra boolean to detect if we are already pulling or not. And it's basically if the length, the current length of the cable is ma more than the minimum that I have then that means we are pulling and I call this blueprint event and finally I call this drop method that comes from the pickup to finish the action and not do anything else so as soon as I detect that I'm pulling this method will completely detach 
the handle of the of the rope from the controller. Okay, let's check these these elements. If we go to the header, you can see that I have this EU property with a minimum length. This val value works for me. And it's a new property to get access from the blueprint. The B is pulling to detect that we are pulling or not. And this blueprint implementable event, which I'm calling over here. So we can use this blueprint implementable event from the from the blueprint class based on this probe. The last thing I have for this code is the implementation drop and pickup that comes from the pickup interface. This interface is common for all pickups. Any pickup will implement the pickup and drop method. As we can see, I'm overriding both methods on the rope. All I'm doing with these two methods is to reset the boolean to the default state. Let's check the configuration for the cable component on constraint. Okay, the cable. So I have the location and this is very important. 180 degrees rotation. Otherwise uh, the cable will be in a different orientation. So this is the one that works. We set this attached into the base, which is this component over here. And this number of segments, and cable first, just 10. And this is for rendering that I change for 5, 6, and 6. So it will look like this. Nice and clean. I also included this material, this material, so you have different color. And that's it, nothing else for the cable. And for the constraint, there is just a couple of things that we need to, to set. One is the location as well. Then this is important. This also needs to go to the base. So everything goes attached to the base and nothing will be out of place. I have limited uh, these elements over here, so I have this limited, limited, and this is free. This works for me. The last thing is limited all of this. And these values work for me, so feel free to play around, to have different effects, but I'm really happy with these settings. The last thing we can do with this rope example, we can use that on pool blueprint event that I implemented on the C++ rope class. This is the event, and all I'm doing is to play a sound, that dark sound that sounds quite fun, and also just to spawn a pickup, a random pickup from taking from this array of pickups. For the location, I'm using this spawn point, which is this element. This is a scene component, and it's quite easy to manipulate and locate what I want. So basically, the array, it takes one random element and just spawn on that spawn point location. This array, it's, uh, it's um, an array of pickups. And I'm initializing that array on the begin play. And that's basically just to add different pickups that I have. Over here, I have these pickups and also these ones. That's all for this fun and quick tutorial. If you like this video, like and subscribe.